Welcome to today's video where we'll dive into common interview questions for data analysts. Whether you're preparing your first interview or looking to brush up on your skills, these questions will help you understand what employers are looking for and how to demonstrate your expertise. In today's session, we're tackling some hot topics. Is AI replacing data analysts? Tips on how to land a data analyst interview. Practice with real interview questions. Feel free to jump to specific sections at your convenience by checking the timestamps in the description box below. If you're new around here, hello, I'm Rasha, a senior data analyst. I make content about the world of data. If you find these topics intriguing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I drop new videos every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, filled with insights and tips to help you navigate your career in data analysis successfully. Let's grow and learn together. No guys, AI is not about to replace data analysts. While AI agents might assist in writing queries and retrieving the right tables from databases, they can fully bridge the gap between the numbers and the managers. We still need to build dynamic visuals, communicate with other teams, understand what the manager needs, um, and think strategically about meeting their needs. There's much more to a role than just writing queries. My days involve a lot more than just coding. If you're curious about how AI agent can assist, make sure to check out my query GPT video. If you're having trouble landing interview, please watch my videos on building a resume and creating a portfolio. Your resume must be perfect and include the right keywords. Also, if you're just starting out, consider, consider aiming for an internship or a junior position. The pay might be lower, but it's a valuable step to get your foot in the door and build your network. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I sometimes post some job openings. Now we'll dive into a common interview question for data analysts. Whether you're preparing your first interview or looking to brush up on your skills, these questions will help you understand what employers are looking for and how to articulate your expertise. An interview usually consists of behavioral and technical questions. Behavioral questions, these questions are to assess past behavior to predict future performance. Technical questions, this is where they evaluate specific technical skills in your knowledge. I'll focus on the more challenging questions, but I'll display the basic ones on the screen for you. Feel free to take a screenshot and make sure you're prepared to answer these as well. Now let's dive into the more complex material. Have you ever made a significant analytical mistake? How did you handle it? Yes, once I ran a delete query and deleted three years of data, I was able to run again my code to regenerate my results, but it was a lesson well learned, and now I use time table for such things. So in this question, I give them an example of a mistake I made, but I also correct the mistake and let them know how I fixed it and also let them know the lesson I learned. So now I'm able to use temp tables. So that shows them my skills. What drives you in your work as a data analyst? I love data-driven insight. We learn so much from data and they help businesses make informed decisions. I like to say that without data, you're just a person with an opinion. How do you prioritize tasks when you have multiple deadlines? I prioritize by impacts and deadline and set priorities. I also communicate regularly with my manager and coworkers to ensure that my priority aligns with the team's mission. So moving on to the technical questions, can you explain the different types of join in SQL and give example of when you might use each one? First, we have inner joins, where they return matching value in both tables. It returns records that have matching values in both tables. It's used when you need data that exists in both tables, such as matching customer IDs and orders and customer information tables. Left joins are all the left and matching from the right. It includes all record from the left table and the match record from the right table. Useful when you want to include all entries from one table, such as all product and their corresponding orders, even if some product have no orders. Full outer are all the columns combined. It combines results of both the left and right tables, showing all records from both tables. It's useful for identifying mismatch, such as which product have not been ordered and which don't, orders don't have a valid product ID. 
cross joints do a Cartesian product of the two tables. It gives you every combination, produces a Cartesian product, pairing each row of one table with the row of the other. It's useful in scenarios where you need every combination of items, like generating a complete list of potential product combinations for a promotion. How do you handle large data sets? I use SQL database to manage and query large data sets, focusing on writing clean, optimized SQL code. I ensure endes are properly used to speed up queries and often use batch processing or incremental loading to manage very large data sets efficiently. Describe by time you use data visualization to help convey a message. In my previous role, I developed a dynamic Power BI dashboard for a call center to track the agent tasks, errors, and KPIs. This visualization enabled the manager to quickly assess operational efficiency, target the performance, leading to targeted training for the agents, and reducing the error rates by 20% over the next year. What steps do you take to clean data, and can you provide an example of a data cleaning challenge you faced? Of course, if I have any missing values, I'm going to investigate them and see if I could omit them or replace them. Also, if I'm using Query in Power BI or Excel, I like to look at my column quality and see if there's any errors or if there's a lot of missing value. If there's a lot of missing value, I investigate. If there's a lot of errors, if there's any actually errors, I'm going to go and investigate. Maybe it's something from my previous code that code that caused the error it could also be the type so i have to make sure that the type of my column and the type of the outcome matches the column also one time i had to deal with a date value that was really formatted so this file came from an extraction and when we extracted it it encrypted the data in a weird format but that was no issue because after comparing the original versus the extraction file, I was able to make a formula that would convert back the date to its original form. What metrics would you look at to assess a company's performance? Depending on the industry, but usually the revenue growth, the profit margin, the cost of customer acquisition, or customer satisfaction. How would you explain the significance of an A-B test to a non-technical stakeholder? An A-B test is a method of comparing two versions of a web page or app to see which one performs better on a specific metric, such as clicks, sign up, or sales. I can give an example with YouTube. When you upload a YouTube thumbnail, you're able to upload three different thumbnails, and whichever thumbnails gets the more clicks and that has the better outcome is the one chosen for the YouTube video. So, this is crucial for making data-driven decisions that could improve our business metrics. So imagine you have a web page, a website, and you're not sure if model A or model B is better. By randomly uh, allowing model A and model B to be deployed and, see, and tracking the usage and the clicks and the signups and the sales, you can see which one performs better and then you can go with A because A had like 80% satisfaction and 80% more clicks versus B only had 20%. So it's a no-brainer that we will go with the website A. Given a table called customers, which contains records of a company's customers with columns, customer ID, first name, last name, and email. Write an SQL query to retrieve a list of all customers' full name and their email address. So let's look at this customer table. Let's look at select all. Perfect. So I can see the customer ID, the first name, last name, email. So we want the full name. To get the full name, it would be the first name, add it with a small space because we don't want them sticking together to the last name. We'll call that full name. And then we're asking for the email for each customer. And let's run this. And perfect, we have our table here. That was a pretty simple one. The next one will be harder. For this question, let me go over it. 
Given two tables, orders and products, write an SQL query to retrieve a list of orders that include the order ID, product name, and the quantity of each product ordered for orders that have more than three items. Assume each order can contain multiple types of products. The output should only include orders where the total quantity across all items in the order is greater than three. Display the order ID, product name, and quantity of each product in those orders. The way I would start with this is find the order ID, product name, and quantity column. Order ID is from the order table. Um, then we have the product name is from the product table. Quantity is from order ID. So we have our three columns. Then what is in common is the product ID. So this is where I'm going to do my join. So let's start. Let's do a select. And we need the order ID. And the product name. And lastly, the quantity. So I have all required three columns. Now I'm gonna go get the tables from, the first table would be the order. Just copy, paste this. I'll call this O. So then we can refer O dot and O dot here. Then we're missing the other table. So we have to do a join. And then it's on this table. And we'll call this P. The common column is the product ID. So O dot product ID is equal P dot product ID. So if I run this, I should get the table that we're looking for without the condition. So now we're missing the to display the ones that have uh, all items in the orders are greater than three. So condition items quantity more than three so let's do this so we're gonna use a where clause where and we need to check with the order id where uh so it's the order id that we're checking order id um and so we're gonna do a subquery select order dot order id since we're using a subquery we need to recall the table we cannot use the o just gonna copy this paste it here and then we want to group it, group by the order ID. And now we can apply our condition. So we're going to have, we're going to use a having. What do we want the sum of the quantity of the order ID to be bigger than three? So sum of quantity is bigger than three and then we can close that that subquery and if we run this code here we have it so here we have two the two is part of order number one because over number one combined is more than three and then we have uh, four here so this also satisfy and if I just go and run everything to double check and I just go and compare the tables, this one and this one. So I see two, four, four. Uh, sorry, I see that this one, order number two, that only had three items was not taken into consideration because it has to be greater than three. So. I think we're okay, our table makes sense, and we have resolved this. 
Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notification of our new videos. If you have any questions or need further clarification on anything we discussed today, leave a comment below. I love hearing from you. Also, follow me on Instagram for updates and exclu exclusive job openings. Until next time, keep analyzing and stay curious.